Next, we have Greek-Egyptian polymath Hapatia, known to be the world's only female universal genius. Hapatia's father was last head of the Library of Alexandra and also a professor of mathematics. Hapatia became an accomplished mathematician, astronomer, and platonic philosopher, writing books such as the Conics of Apollonius, the Astronomical Canon, and Commentary in Diophantus. It is said that she surpassed her father's knowledge at an early age, that her accomplishments in music and science paled all others, and that people would come from cities wide and far to consult with her. Hapati was eventually murdered for her accelerated beliefs. Next, at number 18, is Australian-born American mathematics prodigy Terence Tao, said to have an IQ between 211 and 230, and also notable accomplishments to back up his lofty IQ. Terry Tao's own genius with numbers was discovered when he was just two. By nine, he was doing maths alongside students twice his age at Flinders University in Adelaide. And how do your marks compare with the older students? Well, um, I'll get roughly in the 80s and 90s. At ten, he represented Australia in the International Mathematical Olympiad. It's been said that he's um, possibly the brightest of his age in the whole world. Tao completed his bachelor's and master's in science by 17, his PhD in mathematics from Princeton by age 21. At age 31, he won a Fields Medal and has since done notable work on the nonlinear Schrodinger equation applied to the behavior of light and fiber optic fields. As long as I can remember, I've, I've always loved numbers like patterns that helps explain things about how the world works. You know, you, you, um, it, 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 it makes you feel sort of, it, it can sharpen your thinking. At number 17, we're moving into the heavy hitter range with English political philosopher John Stuart Mill, a top six Cox Buzan genius with a Cox Buzan IQ of 183. To clarify the term Cox Buzan genius, the only two known studies on attempted ranking of the world of geniuses by way of formulaically determined historical IQs are the 1926 ranking of 300 geniuses by Catherine Cox and the 1994 ranking of 100 greatest geniuses of all time by Tony Buzan. Of the combined 400 geniuses, only 15 reoccur, as listed here, in descending order of mean IQ. What this means is that the IQs associated with each person in this meta-analysis listing are likely true IQs, meaning that 100 years from now, these 15 people will still likely be ranking in as the world's smartest people. Mill, coming in at number six according to this ranking methodology, had learned Greek at age three, wrote a treatise on the history of Rome at six, was reading Plato, among other works, at age seven, had learned Latin, geometry, and algebra by eight, conic sections, spherical sections, and Newtonian arithmetic by ten, chemistry by age 13 at the Royal Military College, and 14, he had learned zoology and metaphysics and logic at Montpellier University, and by age 16, he was studying law under John Austin. A notable factoid about Mill is that he could write Greek with his left hand while simultaneously writing Latin with his right. What this curious ability could mean anatomically was that Mill's corpus callosum, the bundle of cords that connect the two hemispheres of his brain, may have been missing or operated differently than a normal person, meaning in effect that he had two brains. Kim Peek, the character behind the movie Rain Man, for instance, had this trait and was born without a corpus callosum. His reading technique consisted of reading the left page of a book with his left eye and the right page of a book with his right eye, and in this way he could read two pages at the same time at a rate of about 8 to 10 seconds per page. It is believed that he had a recall content of at least 12,000 books from memory. At number 16 is American physics prodigy Christopher Rada, one of the few pioneers in the advanced subject of human chemical thermodynamics, the view that each person is a large molecule and that the science of chemical thermodynamics governs our relationships. He is said to have had an IQ of 225 at age 16. At age 12, Harada set a world record becoming the youngest to win the International Physics Olympiad, a competition for the world's smartest math and science students, up to age 19. Hirata entered Caltech at age 14, began working with NASA at age 16 on a project exploring the possibility of colonizing Mars, completed his bachelor's degree in physics at Caltech at age 18 with a 4.2 GPA, and his PhD at Princeton at age 22, and is currently an astrophysics professor at Caltech. The significant factoid about Harada is that at age 18, he independently developed a five-part theory of what he called the physics of relationships, consisting of modeling people as human molecules and explaining aspects of human relationships, such as dating, sex, breakups, student body, sex ratios, homosexuality, polygamy, among others, using concepts 
from chemical thermodynamics, such as enthalpy, entropy, chemical reaction equilibrium models, the Chatelier's principle, reaction kinetics, among others. In short, Harada's theory posits that we can model relationships as equilibrium reactions, where X and Y are women and men, XY is a bonded couple in the form of a relationship molecule, that for large student bodies, such as at colleges, we can calculate an equilibrium constant for percentages of single men and women versus attached men and women, and then we can calculate this equilibrium constant from changes in energy, changes in volume, times the pressure of the student body in terms of pressure volume work, along with the quantity of the change in the entropy times the temperature of the system, or entropic energy. As we will come to see, the number one genius on this year's list developed this very same theory over 200 years ago using a variation of this very same equation and wrote out 36 different human chemical reactions of this form as the basis of a 36 chapter novella. At number 15, we have Swedish scientist Emanuel Swedenborg, noted primarily for conceiving of the nebular hypothesis, the view that stars were created by gravitational contraction of stellar matter, whose IQ is estimated in the 1970s by Guinness Book as being in the 210 range. Swedenborg has been called one of the last persons to know everything. Before age 54, he wrote 155 books in 17 different scientific fields, mastering astronomy, engineering, chemistry, mathematics, geology, paleontology, anatomy, physiology, optics, metallurgy, cosmogony, cosmology, and physiology, after which he went on to write an additional 282 books on religion in the remaining 32 years of his life, some being substantial tomes of more than a thousand pages. Next, we have French writer-philosopher Voltaire with an impressive Cox IQ of 190, who is said to have written his first verses from the cradle, by age 12 was writing masterpiece tragedies, which he burned, and by 15 had published his first poems. Of note, Voltaire was a supporter of the revolutionary views of French philosopher Jean Sales, who arrived at the theory that there exists a great principle of human existence which comes from the great process in which so many millions of atoms of the earth become so many millions of human molecules. Sales was eventually imprisoned for this view, and in 1777, a year before Voltaire's death, he visited Sales in prison and donated 500 pounds towards his release in support of his theory. To put this into context, it would be another 211 years before the molecular formula for a human being was calculated in the year 2000 by American limnologists Robert Sterner and James Elser. At number 13, we have the great English writer William Shakespeare, who in his short lifetime wrote 38 plays, 154 sonnets, two long narrative poems, and is the world's most quoted person and generally considered the greatest writer of all time. Shakespeare is the third smartest genius according to Buzan's ranking of the world's 100 greatest geniuses behind Gotha and Da Vinci and head of Einstein with an IQ of 210. Shakespeare is the world's number one author according to World Cat Identities, his most popular work being Hamlet, coming in ahead of Goethe, whose most popular work is Faust. Next we have Italian physicist and astronomer Galileo Galilei, a top five Cox Buzan genius, the founder of dynamics, the first to significantly invent the thermometer and experimentally test for the existence of vacuums, and who famously went on trial in support of the Copernican heliocentric theory. According to Galileo, those who rely simply on the weight of authority to prove any assertion without searching out the arguments to support it act absurdly. One should question freely and answer freely without any sort of adulation. That well becomes anyone in sincere search for the truth. At number 11, we have English polymath Thomas Young, an accomplished physician, physicist, and Egyptologist, noted for having been the first to define the word energy in a modern sense, in 1807, for having invented the mysterious double slits experiment, wherein he introduced the wave theory of light, and for having translated the Rosetta Stone, the key to the understanding of the Egyptian origin of all modern religions. Young is a leading contender for the title of the last person to know everything. Among those credited multiple times as having been defined as the last person to know everything include Leibniz, Young, Gotha, Kircher, Mill, Aristotle, Da Vinci, Bacon, 
and John Milton. At number 10 is German mathematician Gottfried Leibniz, a top three Cox Buzan genius with an IQ between 194 and 205, realistically, who had a huge range of theoretical as well as practical interests. He was a philosopher, mathematician, historian, logician, political writer, counselor to statesmen and aristocrats, was defined as a universal genius, and is a leading contender for the last man to know everything, and notably the intellectual twin to Newton, so to speak, for his development of calculus and differential equations. At number nine is German mathematical prodigy Carl Gauss, who was correcting his father's payroll additions at age three, made his first groundbreaking mathematical discoveries as a teenager, and will go on to make contributions in varied fields, including number theory, geometry, probability, statistics, astronomy, and in particular, electromagnetism, a field in which he laid out the groundwork for the later famous Maxwell's field equations. In 1910, MIT physicist Daniel Comstock described age 10 Gauss as being comparable in mindset to the famous Harvard prodigy William Sidus, the character behind the 1997 film Good Will Hunting. In 2005, Stephen Hawking described Gauss as unquestionably the greatest mathematician of all time. An interesting anecdote about Gauss is that at age seven, a teacher asked the classroom he was in to add up all the integers from one to 100, at which point Gauss quickly wrote down the answer of 5,050 without even thinking, while the other students struggled away using slates and chalk. The trick Gauss used was that he knew that adding up integers from one to 100 amounted to adding up the pairs of one, 100, 299, 398, that there were 50 of these pairs, each adding up to 101, therefore the quick answer was 50 times 101, or 5,050. At number eight is the grand poobah of prodigies, American mathematician, lawyer, physicist, astronomer, William Sidus, estimated and tested as an adult by two different psychologists to have had an IQ of 250 to 300. And famously, the person behind the 1997 film Good Will Hunting a film based on the life and times of Cytus as detailed in the 1986 book The Prodigy by Amy Wallace. Cytus was speaking at six months, reading and spelling correctly by age two, was typing in French and English by four, by age five had invented a base 12 logarithm table, by six he was able to pass the Harvard Medical School anatomy exam, by eight, he'd passed the entrance exam for MIT and had written at least four books on anatomy, astronomy, grammar, linguistics, and mathematics. By 10, he spoke six languages, had mastered calculus, and was checking Einstein's newly published papers for errors. At age 11, he was lecturing to professors on four-dimensional bodies at the Harvard Mathematics Club. By 16, he had completed his bachelor's degree in mathematics at Harvard. By 17, he was a professor of mathematics at Rice University, working towards his PhD. By 18, he was in law school at Harvard. At 21, he was working at MIT on advanced theoretical physics problems. And at age 22, while locked in an insane asylum, he wrote out his masterpiece, The Animate and the Inanimate, wherein he used the following formula to explain human existence as a type of entropy reversal, and in which he predicted the existence of black holes over 40 years before the word black hole was even invented. As we will see, our number one genius on this year's list used a variation of the same formula to explain human existence, albeit in terms of chemical affinity A. An interesting anecdote about Sidus is that later in his life, he would do New York Times crossword puzzles with his friend Rab, played by Ben Affleck in the film. While Rab would work away row by row, column by column, Sidus would do the entire crossword puzzle completely in his head within a few minutes without writing anything down. Well, as a matter of fact, I won't because Wood drastically underestimates the impact Wood of social distinctions. Wood drastically underestimates the impact of social distinctions predicated upon wealth, especially inherited wealth. You got that from Vickers. Work in Essex County, page 98, right? Yeah, I read that too. Were you going to plagiarize the whole thing for us? Do you have any thoughts of, of your own on this matter? But you, is that your thing? You come into a bar, you read some obscure passage, and then pretend you, you pawn it off as your own... Is your own idea just to impress some girls, embarrass my friend? See, the sad thing about a guy like you is in 50 years, you're going to start doing some thinking on your own, and you're going to come up with the fact that there are two certainties in life. One, don't do that. And two, you dropped 150 grand on a fucking education you could have got for $1.50 in late charges at the public library. 